Remember when. Yes. Y'all remember when? Ooh, I do. What about you? Y'all remember when? Let's get into it today, man. <laughs> I got some shit for y'all today. So, let me ask y'all something. Y'all remember when you had an odd number of people trying to play street football? What did you have to do? And we gonna, I'm going to find out how old some of y'all are. Because a lot of y'all, y'all don't go outside no more. So, y'all ain't never been outside. So if you ain't been outside, this doesn't apply to you. You have no idea what I'm talking to, talking about. But if you are of a certain age and you actually did go outside, you had an odd number of people trying to play football. Y'all outside in, in somebody's yard or you in the street, y'all trying to play a game of football. It's an odd number of y'all. What do you have to do? I'm going to let that one sink in for a little bit. Remember when you had to be the all-time QB? <laughs> Remember when you had to be all-time QB? So it's nine of y'all out there. And you look, you can't you, you can't play five on four. So guess what? Somebody got to be all-time QB. <laughs> so if you could if you could throw, you had an arm, I'm all-time QB. You just step up and you volunteer. I'm all-time QB. And you making dope passes, but let you throw an interception. Man, you throwing good for them. You ain't throwing good for us. All time QB. <laughs> y'all remember that? <laughs> it's 11 of y'all out there. Can't play five on six. Somebody got to be all time QB. <laughs> all the good days of the all time QB. Slinging it for both teams. <laughs> throwing dimes. <laughs> Oh, man, y'all remember when the all-time QB was in full effect. Mm, mm, mm. Y'all remember when the NFL had left-handed quarterbacks? I remember there was a time when it was nothing to have four or five dudes slinging it from the left side. And it was nothing to think about. It was not uncommon to have a left-handed quarterback. You go down the list over the years, and I'm going to leave out some guys, obviously, but I think about the Steve Youngs of the world. I think about Boomer Esiason. I think about Scott Mitchell, you know, in the in the Detroit Lion, you know, mid-90 days when he was with the Dolphins, and then he got the big contract to go play. Uh, I, w I think it was the other way around. He was with the Lions. Oh, he might have been with the Dolphins. And then he got the big contract to go to Detroit, and that did. He, he had one or two years in there. Herman Moore and company, Brett Perriman. Uh, anyway, I digress. Um, there were so many left-handed quarterbacks, man. So many left-handed quarterbacks. Brunel with the Jaguars. And it's amazing that there aren't many anymore. You know, you, you had uh, McMahon, Jim McMahon with the uh, Bears. Then later on with the Eagles. Michael Vick is my favorite left-handed quarterback of all time. I mean, him and Steve Young, they're right there neck and neck. I love me some Steve Young. Thought he was extremely underrated in his career for what he was able to do. But it's amazing how there just aren't any of those guys anymore. You know, we had we didn't have a left-handed quarterback in the league until Tua just got in the league last year. Think about that for a while. There, there hadn't been. There was like a, a stretch. Kellen Moore. The, the, the Cowboys offensive coordinator was the last left-handed quarterback in the league. I don't even know if he even took a regular season snap. He may have, he may not have, but you're talking about 2000 and maybe 11 was Kellen Moore before he was, I mean, I probably, I'm probably, he probably was like 2016, 17, maybe. I don't know. Um, but it, it was a long stretch there. And I really feel like it was longer than that. We didn't have a left, you know, Matt Liner was left-handed and he was in the league for a little while. We didn't have a lot of left-handed quarterbacks though. It's crazy. We used to have a whole bunch of them. We really don't have those anymore. It's crazy. But Tua, and, and you know, is ushering back in the left-handed quarterback. Hopefully he plays well. 
And maybe we'll see more left-handed tossers coming from the collegiate ranks into the NFL. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I got a super chat here from Gunny Man. That's a good one, Gunny Man. That's a good one. Thank you for the super chat. Gunny Man says, remember Mississippi Rush? Five seconds, then blitz. It was either five Mississippi or ten Mississippi. It was usually five. Ten is too damn long. You don't want to give somebody 89 minutes to throw the football. It was you know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. You, was, you used to try to say it as fast as you could, right? And they'd be like, no, nah, you can't say Mississippi's that fast. You know, you got to actually space them out. <laughs> So you up there, one Mississippi, and then you try to say it all out. Two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. And as you're saying that fifth Mississippi, you already take it off running. <laughs> Good one, Gunny, man. Good one. Good one. Jim Zorn, another left-handed tosser. Absolutely. I said I would leave out some guys. There were so many of these guys growing up, and um, we just don't have enough left-handed tosses of the football y'all remember when Nicolas Cage was a B-list actor like whatever happened to Nicolas Cage's career man like this dude went from you know starring in some big time movies to just taking any movie he can and, and getting any kind of work like he's become a joke now has Nicolas Cage right I, I like my, me and my fiance were watching Netflix, and if we scroll past the Nicolas Cage, when she's like, just keep going, don't stop. I hate Nicolas. She's like, I hate Nicolas Cage and his movies. He's terrible. This guy is in every single like he doesn't know how to say no to a script. They bring him some. It could be straight bullshit. You know, it could be, hey Nick, we got a great script for you, man. This this movie is called The Banana Blast Cage, and it's about bananas in a cage. And you're having a blast inside of it. And he's like, yeah, sounds good to me. Let's do it. Like, what the hell is that? I don't know, man. You know what's crazy? There was a stretch there where, you know, Con Air and, and leaving Las Vegas and Face Off with John Travolta. My favorite Nick Cage movie was Gone in 60 Seconds. I love that movie. Some people didn't. I love that movie. And it's like after Gone in 60 Seconds, his shit just went downhill, man. He started taking on all kinds of movies, and next thing you know, this guy is like a, a D-list actor, you know? I don't know what the hell happened to Nick Cage, but uh, mm. anyway, I digress. Remember when he was actually a respected actor? Mm. Remember when T.O., and I, I could talk about T.O. on Remember When so many different times. You know, there's the time he was doing crunches in his driveway. There was the time he ran over to the uh, cheerleaders and grabbed the pom-poms and started getting it in. There was the time he you know, grabbed the, the Sharpie out of his sock and signed the football. There's so many T.O. stories. There's the time he decided he wanted to spread eagle on the cowboy star not once but twice. And then George Ice Teague came and gave him a, a forearm shiver. But I don't want to talk about none of those today. Maybe another day. Y'all remember when T.O. stepped up to the podium after a Cowboys loss to the Giants in the 2008 playoffs, that 27, uh, 2007 season in which the Giants ultimately went on to beat the undefeated New England Patriots? You remember when he stepped up to the podium and recited the famous quote, if you do that, that's really unfair. That's really unfair. That's my teammate. That's my quarterback. <laughs> That's my quarterback. <laughs> First of all, where the hell did that come from? Like, he must have been really hurt. Because he had the black shades on. He already knew he was about to go up there and get emotional. I'm emotional and I can't let go. He also knew he was going to get emotional. Because he already had the dark, dark shades. You couldn't even see his eyes. So he already knew he was about to get emotional up there. And they, they, they asked the Tony Romo question and it sent him over the edge. That's really unfair. That's unfair. That's my teammate. That's my quarterback. 
<laughs> oh man, Terrell El Dorado Owens. Mm, mm, mm. What a character. Y'all remember when? Movies had dope soundtracks. Some of y'all might be a little too young for that. Movies having dope soundtracks. Some of your favorite songs are off of movie soundtracks. They don't do that anymore. Like, in order to have a dope movie, you had to have the soundtrack to accompany that movie. Or else, the shit wasn't the same. It didn't flow. You had to have the dope soundtrack to accompany the movie. You know, I think about Juice and how dope that soundtrack was. How about Boomerang? That's a really underrated soundtrack. One of the best soundtracks is to the movie Boomerang. You think about, you know, Bad Boys 2 of recent note. And that was kind of the end of the soundtrack era was that Bad Boys 2, Shake Your Tail Feather and all of the songs that were up there and that were hits. They had a couple of them on that Bad Boys 2 soundtrack. Big hits, smashes. Um... My favorite soundtrack of all time, however, and I don't know if this is up for debate, at least not for me, Above the Rim. <laughs> Regulators! Mound up. Okay, Regulators isn't on an album. I mean, I'm pretty sure Warren G or, you know, or Nate Dogg put it on their album, but that was on a soundtrack. That was on the Above the Rim soundtrack. How about anything from SWV that and a lot of you don't even know that wasn't the original anything you listen to SWV's album and that's not how the original anything sounds they did in uh anything above the rim remix specifically for the soundtrack and that was a smash the above the rim soundtrack to me crushes all other soundtracks but they, they, don't, they don't do that anymore. How about New Jack City? Living just enough for the city I'm living just enough. <laughs> Nobody they was singing at the beginning of the movie? Like, they don't make soundtracks like that anymore, man. Why? 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 I don't know, man. Stop asking. I don't know why. Stop asking. I just know I remember when. Do you? <laughs>